At the turn of the 20th century, physicist investigations into what made hot objects glow would lead to the ultraviolet catastrophe, a discovery that unveiled one of the largest flaws in physics and destroyed the world. Well, not really. In 1900, a British physicist named Lord Rayleigh knew that the colour of hot objects glow depended on temperature. He wanted to figure out where the light came from, and in doing so, determine a formula to figure out the colour of light emitted at different temperatures. Rayleigh considered an object called a black body, something that perfectly emitted energy and absorbed all light that hid it without reflecting. In the real universe, objects like black bodies don't exist, but stars come pretty close. Anyway, so Rayleigh and his friend James Jeans used their current view of particle physics, seeing the black body as enclosed by vibrating oscillators. They imagined a black body where the movement of these vibrating particles was constantly being turned into energy, thus deriving the rayleigh Jeans law. The prediction suggested that an ideal object, a black body at a constant temperature, would emit energy proportional to its frequency squared, meaning that the energy it emits would increase exponentially as its average frequency increased. Here lies the problem. Because UV light has a frequency higher than visible light, at any temperature, from an object at 1 Kelvin to your toaster, infinite UV light would be emitted, disintegrating the Earth in an instant thus violating the law of conservation of energy and causing a little issue. Actually, it was a huge issue. A catastrophe. An ultraviolet catastrophe. Think super bad sunburn. The problem was monumental as it highlighted a huge flaw in the classical Newtonian physical arguments of the time. The solution came, somewhat accidentally, from a man named Max Planck. Planck was hired by utility companies to try and find a nice light bulb, one where the maximum amount of energy emitted would be in the visible light spectrum, rather than heat or UV. He probably would have loved LED bulbs. Max Planck saw the difference between the classical Rayleigh genes estimation of the intensity emitted and the actual results recorded, and saw that the intensity dropped off as the frequency of light emitted got larger. So Planck makes one of the biggest moves in physics and basically changes his homework solutions to the right answer. What if each oscillator in a black body can only have an energy which is an integer multiple of minuscule value h? In other words, the energy permitted to and exiting the oscillator was quantized. Energy was not a continuously variable wave like Lord Rayleigh had assumed. In other, other words, there must be a minimum energy that can be emitted by the oscillator, equaling frequency times Planck's constant, h equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. This explains why physicists hadn't discovered the packet-like nature of energy. The packets were just way too small. Planck derived the formula En equals NHV, where n is an integer and laid his findings to rest, happy that the maths was right. It literally took an Einstein to further postulate that at high frequencies, the minimum energy is so high that it would be very unlikely that the oscillators would ever move that fast, allowing for the drop in the graph at high frequencies. Max Planck proposed the quantization of energy to cover his tracks and explain the distribution of black body radiation but it turned out opening the door to the entire field of quantum mechanics as we know it.